This is Tubataha Reef's Natural Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and the crown jewel of diving in the Philippines. It is Eden on Earth. Translated from the Sama language as long reef exposed at low tide, it is known for its pristine reefs, enchanting marine life, over 360 species of corals, and close to 600 species of fish. Save for two years due to the pandemic, I have been diving Tubataha at least once a year since 2014. For this 10th year visit, I want to share with you why Tubataha remains my favorite spot on the planet. I'm Noel Guevara, conservation photographer, filmmaker, and National Geographic explorer. And I believe in the transformative power of a journey. Join me as I explore incredible destinations, immersing myself into their ecosystems and forging bonds with the locals. As I connect with the destinations on my journey, the insights I gain always come from the most unexpected of places. Proving that when navigating our journeys in life, they should be uncharted. This is Life Uncharted. My current track started with my first Tubataha trip in 2014. Little did I know then that it would play a constant role in my life. The following year, I went back to Tubataha officially as a photographer. And it was also on this trip that I met my wife. Then it was a visit year after year, jump-starting a career in conservation photography and filmmaking. You may have even seen my billboard in Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Manila, which I took in 2018. And then there was 2019 where I went three times on assignment. That resulted in another billboard, which you can still see in the airport today. COVID made it impossible to go to Tubataha for two years. But in 2022, I finally led my own group on my first workshop trip. We've just landed here in Puerto Princesa from Manila, completing the first leg of what would probably be my 11th trip to Tubataha in the last 10 years. I'm joined by Boog Rosales, underwater cinematographer, one of the best in the country, if not the best. If he's top one, I'm top two. <laughs> so all the underwater video clips of me that you will see in this video will be taken by Boogs. Now, all trips to Tubataha start and end here in Puerto Princesa. And generally speaking, it's a, it's a whole day, multi-leg journey from Manila to the reefs. Tubataha is located in the middle of the Sulu Sea. 150 kilometers southeast of Puerto Princesa City in Palawan. This 97,000 hectare marine protected area is made up of the North Atoll, South Atoll, and Jesse Beasley Reef. All the diving is done around these reef systems. The reef is only open from March to June of each year, when sea and weather conditions make the journey across the Sulu Sea possible. You can only access Tubataha by going on a liveaboard, usually a comfortable motorized yacht where you'll sleep, eat, and use as a base of dive operations. Now, there are many liveaboards that go to Tubataha each year. I've been on a few more than once. But for this trip, I will be on the Philippine Siren. The Philippine Siren is a 40-meter vessel that is considered to be one of the most luxurious liveaboards to visit Tubataha. Made of teak and ironwood, every inch of the Siren is designed to give its guests unprecedented comfort. It lost its sails due to the last big storm, but even then, it's still a beautiful ship. For years, I've wished for the chance to go on the Siren, but it was way over my budget. This time though, my stars aligned as I was here on assignment. Speaking of this assignment, I'm currently working with Artifact and their partners in NFTs for good. They gave me a list of endangered species that I need to take photos of. It doesn't seem too hard at first glance, 
but the wild is unpredictable, and we can only hope for the best while doing our best. Nothing is more calming than the look of Tubataha in the morning. Check this out. Look at that. This is why I like going to Tubataha in May. The water is much warmer at around 31 degrees. It's also much calmer. Let's go diving. Today, we are diving in the southwest section of the North Atoll, which is a great place to start. To make this video more immersive, I've rigged a GoPro on top of my camera housing to show my point of view underwater. I then added a simulated graphic so you can differentiate between the GoPro footage and Boogs' clips. The diving into Bataha is a mix of wall, drift, reef, and blue water dives. You normally start at the drop-off, so you can see down the wall and on the reef itself. And then you just go where the action is. It's a beautiful reef. If only I could see it properly. My old mask broke before this trip and my new one was fogging like crazy no matter how many times I burned the inside but anti-fog solution or perform mass clearing. It was so frustrating because I couldn't see well and there was so much activity all around me such as the school of jacks and spawning bumphead parrotfish. I was still shooting though but it felt like I was just using the force as I shot blindly from the hip. Now, after the first two dives, I went back and burned the inside of my mask again. Over and over and over again. Finally, it worked. And just in time. We ended the day with schools of big eye jacks on the reef and yellow tailed barracudas on the wall. Not the greatest of sightings, but not bad either. Good morning guys, welcome to another day here in Tubataha. We are here in the North Atoll near Shark Airport. So I'm pretty excited because Shark Airport is one of my favorite dive sites and it is also the first ever dive site here in Tubataha that I dove in way back in 2014. So after my five checkout dives in Anidao, Batangas, my sixth one was in Shark Airport, which is where we are right now. So I just want to show you something which is how clear Tubataha waters are so let me and you can see just how clear it is and conditions are perfect as always and you have a really nice sunrise over there okay so I hear the bell for the dive briefing happening right now so I go in and let's dive. Almost immediately, Boogs and I got separated. He turned left and I turned right. For a time, I was alone on the reef. As I looked over the ridge, a small school of jacks greeted me down the wall. Right then and there, I knew I was about to have a very special encounter and I didn't have to wait long. I eventually found another group and stayed in front to spot head. But I never forget to look back. And thankfully, I did. Our guide Kenneth was signaling me with his torch and was pointing into the blue. It was a juvenile manta cruising without a care in the world. This is the third time that I saw a manta in Shark Airport. I spent the rest of the dive just shooting the reef. It's hard to imagine 
that just 30 years ago, all this was probably barren and blown up due to years of destructive fishing methods such as dynamite and cyanide fishing. So crazy stuff, crazy dive. I saw a manta today in Shark Airport that was, that was completely, literally out of the blue. This guy found the manta and got me to shoot it. Awesome, man. All right, well done. <laughs> So we're skipping our third dive for the day because we have to photograph birds as part of the assignment. And the only way we could do that well and up close to the bird islet is with the rangers from Tubataha. So thankfully we were able to coordinate with Tubataha management office and they allowed us to go with the rangers as close as we can on the bird islet. Now it's worth noting that only scientists are allowed to step foot on the islet itself. So we will be going around the islet on this patrol boat. So let's go. The rangers are responsible for the direct protection and management of the Bataha. Made up of park staff, local government, Navy and Coast Guard personnel, they are posted into Bataha in two-month rotations. The ranger station is their home base and is the only man-made building in the area. These patrol boats are their means of safeguarding the park and supporting conservation work. Plus, they have this hatch up front which is convenient when photographing seabirds. When one thinks of Tubataha, only diving comes to mind. But Bird Islet is another reason to visit. It's a rookery for migratory seabirds such as the brown, red-footed and masked boobies, the brown and black noddies, and great crested and sooty terns. Bird Islet is also shrinking due to sea level rise caused by climate change. I've done this shoot a couple of times before and the toughest part was staying out under the sun for hours. During this trip, the annual seabird census was also ongoing. The study showed that there was a marked increase in breeding adults this year and in the black noddy population. Proof that when given the chance, nature can recover. I find it highly unusual that we have been diving for two days and we've yet to see a sea turtle. Sea turtles are pretty common in Tubataha, but the irony is, now that I have to photograph them, they do not appear. But I knew that I'm sure to see one here in the most popular dive site in Tubataha, Del San Rec. First order of business is the famous crack on the wall, where strong currents bring nutrients and attract all kinds of pelagic life. it was a bust, so we decided to explore the reef instead, intent on finding a turtle. Reef tops in Tubataha are teeming with sharks. Sharks are severely misunderstood and misrepresented by films and TV shows as mindless killers. This can't be further from the truth. We've reached the end of Del San Rec, and still no sign of turtles. Not wanting to give up, I pushed on against the current to the next dive site, Triggerfish City. I get there, and it was empty. Low on air, I inflated my surface balloon to begin my safety stop. As if the fates were playing with us, there was Boogs, pointing to a turtle that he found. So I turned on my camera and then went for the turtle. But my balloon was already inflated, so it was acting like a surface anchor. Then, as if to mock me, the turtle then decides to dive. Thankfully, Boogs swims in to take my surface balloon, setting me free to follow this turtle. 
I finally find it, but now it refused to show its face as it was busy feeding on the hard corals. Boogs joins me and I signal to him that I was out of air. And I make one last effort to circle to the turtle's other side to get a good portrait. I finally get it. I then stay with him a bit longer until I felt my air get thin. I have no words to describe just how ridiculous the last part of that dive was. So I always say that Del Sun Rec is one of the most incredible dive sites here in Tubataha. And most of the time, it would be because of encounters like turtles or jacks or sharks and so on. But in this case, it's because of these two idiot divers. But you know, a story to tell the grandkids. After all that, we eventually saw turtles left and right on every single dive. I had a very good feeling about this day, to be honest. Weather was good, sea was flat, the sun was shining. Let's go. And when I felt a strong current underwater, my gut feel was that something was brewing. The reef was alive and busy, and these giant trevallies were buzzing us the whole time. And that's when I saw it. A juvenile manta cruising at the edge of the reef and getting itself clean. Reefs act as cleaning stations for pelagics like mantas and sharks. This manta was so chill and calm, and so I swam in and started shooting. Moments later, Boogs arrived and I disengaged to let him film the manta. I'll leave you with this amazing clip by Boogs of the manta against the sun. It was a spectacular encounter, but Black Rock wasn't done with us just yet. On the third dive, our group went ballistic when a juvenile whale shark was spotted near the surface. It's my first whale shark in Tubataha since 2019, so I was so happy to see it. I swam up as fast as a gradual controlled ascent would allow to meet it in the blue. There were just too many divers though, and I couldn't get a clear shot, but that's okay. I tried to follow it as it continued to dive, but it was just going too deep, too fast. Boogs and I couldn't believe our luck. We were even able to toast with two empty beer cans that we coincidentally separately found. Man, oh man, this is turning out to be one of the best Tubataha trips ever. And it's a huge coincidence that all of these happened here on my 10th year coming back to Tubataha. And here's the thing, we're not done yet. We have one more day of diving tomorrow, well, half day. So let's see what else Tubataha has in store for us.
it's our last diving day here in Tubataha and we are hit with a squall. So you can you could hear how strong the wind is. And right behind me, you can see these massive clouds that are about to let go of some rainfall. So fingers crossed, we still get to dive today and everything calms down. Oh, wild. wild. <laughs> The rough conditions persisted throughout the early morning. This was highly unusual this time of the year and more common in early March or late June. That won't stop us from diving though. Jesse Beasley is a small but gorgeous reef. You can easily circumnavigate it on one dive. There have been sightings of whale sharks and hammerheads here, but I've never seen either. With rougher service conditions, getting into the skiff was a lot harder. The ride was also bumpier. But once you get into the water though, it's all calm and steady. We spent half of our time away from the wall and near the blue, hoping for a glimpse of a hammer or a whale shark. But no luck. But the turtles were out on the reef, so that was fun. Sometimes I just stop and take in this lush, photogenic reef. For the second dive, we hugged the wall again but the visibility was quite bad and it was hard to see ahead. We spotted some schools of fish and an eagle ray off in the distance. It was anticlimactic to be honest, but at least this baby turtle dropped by to say goodbye. Boogs on the other hand had one last hurrah. They found this huge school of jacks just swirling on top of the reef. Every diver experiences Tubataha differently. And that is what Tubataha is all about. With all the dives done, we packed up our gear, cleaned up our cameras, and will now spend the rest of the 12 hour journey back to Puerto Princesa in the company of new friends. It's a special time for a group that spent the last five days diving one of the best dive destinations in the world. We'd reflect on experiences, mess ups, and encounters that will last us a lifetime. Most from this group traveled more than 24 hours to get here, chasing the promise of an underwater paradise. It is at this time that I feel proud to be a Filipino because I have two Bataha in my backyard. I consider myself extremely lucky to be able to visit Tubataha every year. I think about this every time I find myself alone on the reef. Tubataha has been a constant in my life. It's hard not to see it as a friend, a friend that I get to visit every year, in reunions where time stands still and as if not a minute has passed in between. I hope that I can keep visiting Tubataha when I'm old and ripe. More importantly, I hope Tubataha will still be here by then.